going up, if you want to move up, uh, you can kind of come to the middle. I want everybody to be able to come to the middle and move up. Um, tonight is a very special night. Amen. Um, well, I, you know, I say tonight is a very special night, but every day is a very special day. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Before um, I introduce our guest speaker tonight, there's a hum. We're humming. Um, before I introduce our guest speaker, just a couple of quick things. Um, thank you, everybody that was a part of the women's conference on this past weekend. My Lord, um, it was a it was a tremendous success, and I know that the women are tired. Because they, they jumped, they shouted, they screamed, they prayed, they worshiped, they fell out in the Lord, they prayed some more, they got up, they had an all-night prayer vigil. I mean, they, they, it, there was nothing else that could be squeezed in that, in that time. And I believe that the women had a wonderful time in the Lord, and the energy was electric, and you felt it on Sunday. Thank you for Sunday. Sunday was fantastic and phenomenal, and I thank the Lord for doing what he did on Sunday. It wasn't a long service, but it was impactful. It was, it was full of purpose, and I believe that the Lord did some wonderful things in that service. A um, couple other things. Saturday is mandate. So, so let, me, let me give you a push from the pulpit. Each man bring a friend. Bring a friend. Bring a friend. There's some fantastic things going on with our men. And as men get together, we sharpen one another. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Men sharpening men. Men inserting their lives into other men and other men inserting their lives into them. And we get past the walls and we get past the roadblocks and we get past all of these things that we have as men and we get down to being not men, but men of God. And that makes all the difference. Um, last thing I want to share tonight before I introduce our guest speaker. Next Wednesday, um, how many of you have been here since the January fast? Most of you have been. There has been some tremendous, tremendous testimonies that have been coming forward since we started this year. I'll go back a few months before then when the Lord gave us the vision for this year, which was being positioned for the possession. And we are being strategically positioned. A church can't be positioned without families being positioned. I'll say it again. The church can't be positioned without families being positioned. Families are getting in, in their right position. They're getting... They're, they're healing within their families. They're, they're growing within their family. They're becoming lovers of the word within their families, and they're bringing that into the fellowship. We say that revival can't start until it happens inside one person, and revival starts in your heart. And as you experience revival in your heart, somebody else is experiencing it in their heart. And when we come together corporately, now we got two or four or eight people uh, experiencing that revival, and that spark spreads. And so as we're being positioned and being repositioned and some old things are being shaken off and some new things are being adapted and we are moving further in the Lord, there have been a lot of testimonies, testimonies of healing, deliverance, um, restoration, financial breakthroughs, um, you name it, we, we've had those things happen. And um, next Wednesday, I want to take a time for a few people, and I don't, have a, I don't have a set number, and I don't have anybody in particular, that if you feel that the Lord has given you a testimony to share for the body, because testimonies help to be able to encourage the body. If you have a testimony that you would like to share, I would like to give us an opportunity on Wednesday to be able to share that. Remember, the word says that we're more than overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, that there's a testimony that comes out 
of whatever you've been through and knowing that God has covered you in that by the blood of Jesus. So um, if that is you, and I will announce it again on Sunday, um, I want to take a time to know because I, I hear um, Sunday night we have this thing that we do, uh, uh, the pastors, and we, we meet and we just, we just talk and we, we have dessert and drink coffee and we just share. And man, between people telling them and people telling us, we hear all of these, these great things that are going on in the family, but that's not getting out to everybody. So we want to afford a time where everybody can hear that. Amen? Amen? Amen. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the guest speaker for tonight. It is no other than, no, no other than Elder Chip Carraway. Uh, Chip, Chip Carraway is, um, is a mighty man of God. I mean, he is, he is a man that is of great integrity and character. It, I, I, if I could say one thing about Chip, if I could say one thing, I would say, that integrity is his middle name. Yeah. That what you see is what you get. It's, it's, if, it, if God is for it, he's for it. If God is not for it, he's not for it. And his stance is his stance. And he, you, you can't get a bulldozer to push him off of it. And so we need more men like that that can take a stand for the word of God. And I've been excited for the last two weeks to hear what he is going to share what the Lord has given him tonight. So uh, without further ado, I present to some and introduce to others Elder Chip Carraway. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we got is time until we don't have any more. Oh. Well, I just want to pray to start with, because without God, none of this is possible anyway. Amen. Father, we just give you thanks. We give you thanks for this service tonight. Father, we give you thanks that we have an opportunity to come into your house. Father, to hear your word, not the word of man, but Father, the word through the Holy Spirit Amen. that you deliver through the speaker of this house. Father, we thank you that your word is true. Father, we thank you that your word goes out and does not return void. Amen. Father, and I thank you that you use me tonight, Father, to feed your sheep. Father, to give them the words that you would desire for them to have, Father. Father, I thank you for it, and I give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is quite a privilege to be up here i'm up here all the time but it's always doing tithes and offerings or announcements or communion or something like that but this is different and as pastor d talked about last wednesday this is pastor mike's pulpit so when he asks you to come up here and speak there's a great responsibility that goes with that because it's my responsibility to know his heart. First of all, to know the heart of God. Amen. Secondly, to know my pastor's heart. Amen. And not to do anything that will embarrass them. Amen. Because any fires that I start, he has to come put out. <laughs> so, uh, uh, when he asked me to do this, he said, just, I want you to, talk to the people about something that they can use to help them live their lives. Amen. And all I can tell you is the way I live my life. Amen. All right now. I can't tell anybody's story but my own. Amen. It's the only one I got. Amen. And if I'm not me, who's going to be me? All right now. Good word. I can't be anybody else. I don't always do it perfectly I don't always say the right things don't always do the right things but through God's grace I'm getting better at it that's right. that's I'm getting right. better that's right. 
And that's all we can do is go from glory to glory to glory. We take one step, then we take another step, then we take another step. And as long as we're taking those steps with our eyes on Jesus, then we're going in the right direction. But the Word tells us that we have an adversary that tries to come against us because he wants to steal, kill, and destroy everything we have. He wants to steal our faith. He wants to steal our lives. He wants to steal our livelihoods. He wants to steal our families. He wants to take everything that God brings pleasure to. God created everything so that we could live in abundance. But the devil wants to steal it. So what we have to do is get in the word and keep him from doing that. All right. He's number one, he's a liar. He tries to tell us he's been trying to tell me stuff all day. Mm-hmm. About this right here. All right, I know. I know that's right. And he's a liar. Because the word says, Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So if he's telling me something negative, I know it's got to be just the opposite. That's right. That's I know that God has me in his hand right now. Yeah. God has a word for y'all. Yeah. God wants to use not only me, the pastors, and every one of you to feed the sheep that are outside these doors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We all have a purpose. We all have a mission. And if we don't seek ye first the kingdom of God, right, we don't know what that is. All right, we don't know what that is. All right. So what God's been giving me the last couple of weeks is the lust of the flesh mm-hmm. and the fruits of the Spirit. All right. And you can't fulfill both. You can't. You're either going to walk in the flesh or you're going to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Mm. I've got my major notes right here. (laughs) I put this one in here quite a while back and I've just never gotten rid of it. And even though I'm a lot better at it than I used to be, pastor keeps telling me I need to throw it away, but uh, I might want to keep it for later reference. <laughs> uh, Galatians five sixteen. If you walk in the Spirit, you shall, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the Spirit are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, now. And when you walk out these doors and you walk out into the world, that right there is what you see. The enemy has put all of this in place to distract us from what we should be walking in. Because if you're walking in any of this stuff, you're walking in defeat. You're walking in defeat. And I know for a fact, because there was a time in my life that I didn't walk in all of those. (laughs) But some of them, (laughs) some of them just, you know, that line I talk about that I ain't crossing, some of those are in there. I'm not doing it. Never. Ever, ever will not do it. But those things are what destroy us. 
we get too many payments. We have things that we want the fancier car. We want the bigger house. We want this or that or the other. Or we would rather go do this because it's more fun than taking time away to come do the things that God wants us to do. All of the distractions. It looks like you've seen the picture of the, the carrot dangle in front of the horse's face just to get him to move. That's what the devil does with us, with all these things. He makes them look good. He makes them look like they're going to just be the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. right. But they're not. Right. They're death. Mm -hmm. They're death to us. Because we start focusing on those things instead of the things of God. All right. Right. And if we don't keep our eyes focused on God, it's easy to take that path to the left, the broad path. The path of destruction. But we got to keep our eyes focused on the narrow path. Where few find it. It takes work. It takes thought. It takes study. It takes being on your face. It takes getting on your knees. It takes talking to God. It takes having a personal relationship with God. That's what it takes. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really easy. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. When you look at it, when you look at the things of this world, you look at the things of the flesh, and you see the drug problem we have, the alcohol problems we have. Do y'all watch the news? Somebody getting shot in San Antonio and Austin every day. Minute by minute, getting stabbed, getting shot, getting run over, backing up, running over them again. That's what this is. That's the lust of the flesh. That's what people think is fun. Mm -hmm. They think going to the club and getting shot is fun. Mm -hmm. They think walking after the things of the flesh mm -hmm. is fun. They think waking up in the morning with a hangover is fun. I did that once or twice or a few right. times. Yeah. Right. I can say, I've, I've been there. I know what some of these are. Mm -hmm. I can't remember one time ever that that was fun. You wake up and you think, what did I do and why did I do it? And I ain't never going to do it again. But as we learn to walk with God... That stuff becomes a distant memory. We don't remember that anymore. You know, pastor talks about, you haven't drank in how long? 86. 1983. Quit smoking dope. Quit smoking cigarettes. Quit drinking. Quit chasing wild women. That's right. Couldn't catch them anyway. <laughs> They're slippery little boogers. <laughs> but then, in 1987, I had a little fallout. For a couple of years. And the whole time I was falling out. I knew I shouldn't have been doing it. Mm -hmm. But I did it anyway. Mm -hmm. To fit in with the group. Uh -huh. The crowd that I worked with. Mm -hmm. But then. In 1990. God got a hold of me again. Yeah. And All said. Right. All right. And I said I quit. That's it. Yeah. Didn't work the first time. Thought I had to try it again. Didn't work that time either. So you try to fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh, what seems right to a man, the end of it is death. That's right. Every time, the end of it is death. Can't live in it. Can't live in it. There's no way you can do it. You can't. And if you think I'm wrong, start watching people. 
I watch people all the time. Yesterday, on 183 North, going out of Lockhart, there was a lady standing beside her car, and there was, I guess, her boyfriend, her husband, standing about from here to the back of the stage away from her, and they were doing this at each other. That ain't life. That's death. That's what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to destroy us. He's trying to keep us at odds with each other, with each other, friends, family. He don't care. He don't care. Because if he can get us, it gives God a black eye. And we should be refusing to participate in that. That's right. You know, I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody. If I say you, I mean me. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. I got four fingers. Mm-hmm. If I point one, three's coming right back mm-hmm. here. So the odds are in your favor. Mm-hmm. But you, we, you, we, you, we. Even inside these walls right here. That's right. There's people that are dealing with things. Mm-hmm. I deal with things. Mm-hmm. Kathy deals with things. Mm-hmm. We all deal with something in one way or the That's other. Right. That's right. But we have the victory. Yeah. We have a victory over that. Yeah. And the easiest thing to do and the hardest thing to do is set it down and walk away from it. But because of the lust of the flesh, we have a tendency to want to go pick it back up. Go pick it back up. Well, I hate it, but I love it. I hate it, but I love it. I hate it, but I love it. You got to get to that point, walking with God, that you hate it all the time. That it's always a love-hate relationship. I love God, so the things of this world, the lust of the flesh... I hate that. Hate's a strong word. But when it comes to this, it's life and death. So either choose life or it becomes death every time. And having said that, that we all deal with issues, I remember Pastor Wendy several years ago. I want to encourage anybody that's struggling with anything. She's going, what did I say? What did I say? I don't remember. (laughs) If you're at the bottom of the hill and you're running and you just think you can't make it, you can't get there, it's just too far. Your breakthrough is right at the top of the hill. That's right, that's right. Right at the top of the hill. So if you just keep moving, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. It's kind of like when Pastor Jeff didn't train for the marathon. (laughs) It took him all day, but he finished. He kept putting one foot in front of the other. And when he crossed the finish line, he was taking steps about that long. But he will not quit because he's not going to be defeated. He won't. He won't do it. So just remember that that breakthrough, whatever it is, is just right there at the top of the hill. But if you quit at the bottom... You'll never get there. And remember, God is the same God at the bottom of the hill that he is at the top of the hill. He doesn't change. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. So you have to look forward to the top of the hill. I'm going to get to the top of the hill, and then when I get there, there's going to be another one, and another one, and another one. But we go from glory to to glory, to glory, to glory, to glory, as long as you keep moving, and you keep moving with God. You get there every time, every time. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these, there is no law.
I think the one that's in there that's the hardest is love. I have trouble with that one every day. Especially people driving cars. <laughs> they're out there. They're everywhere. But I'm getting better at that too. I don't remember what they call it. It's not our motto, but it is our love people and trust God. Love people. It's what Jesus did, no matter what they did, no matter who they were, no matter how they acted, no matter how, nothing, nothing made any difference to him. He loved everybody unconditionally the same. And we are all at different stages in that. I know I am. Sometimes there's folks out there that are, we think, are unlovely or unlovable. I've got one that's very near and dear to my heart. I struggle with him all the time. All the time. I love him. He's my son. But sometimes, sometimes, it's hard. But that's the way the enemy works. He uses my number one son to make me struggle in an area that I don't want to struggle in. Mm. And that makes it hard, y'all. But Jesus says love them anyway. And if we keep loving them, and we keep walking with them, and we keep holding their hand, and we keep directing them, and we keep, just like our children when they were small, when they fall, we pick them up, we dust their britches off, and send them on their way again. But if we walk it out in front of them, no matter what, you want to say, <laughs> but you speak the word. You speak the word. You love them in spite of it, no matter what. You know, there's things that over the years in this building right here, hopefully I'm getting a handle on it. But I always think that I got to take care of everything. All right. And in that, I offend people. I don't do it intentionally. I don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not my heart to do that. That's right. It's not my heart to do that. But it's just that the integrity of things. Mm -hmm. I try to keep everything in that area. And in that, I have trouble walking in love with everyone. Okay. No matter how close they are. So it doesn't just happen out there. Now remember, I got three fingers pointing back at me, so y'all ain't pointing any fingers at anybody, okay? It's just the way I was raised, the way I've always done things. You know the old saying, if you want it done right, do it yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'm understanding now that there's other ways to do things. Yeah, that's all right. Come on now. Yeah, right there. Come on now. He told me, he said, you just got to let things go. That's you got to put them down and let somebody else take care of it. And by doing that, you can walk in love all the time. You can walk in love. Everywhere you go, every step you take, it's in love. You don't hold accounts. 1 Corinthians 13, mm -hmm. love doesn't keep score. That's right. It doesn't right. hold, mm -hmm. that's right, no records of wrong. Mm -hmm. It's all right. That's right. And then right after love, it talks about joy and peace. And if you're loving everybody, you always got joy and peace. Always. Because nothing can make you mad. 
Nothing gets under your skin. You don't get irritated about anything. It's all good. It's all good. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter anyway. What if that person that you're upset with takes their last breath mm -hmm. and you didn't get the opportunity to tell them you love them? Uh -huh. That's a sad day right there. Mm -hmm. Long-suffering. No matter what it is, we have to put ourselves out there and be long-suffering. We have to love people. We have to, no matter what it is, it may take them six months, it may take them six years, but by walking in love with peace and joy, eventually we're going to walk into whatever it is that we're trying to walk them through. Yeah. Gentleness. Be kind to everyone. Self-control. That's where the traffic comes in, right there. <laughs> Self-control. <laughs> had a lady today. Had her own lane to turn right. There wasn't nobody in it but her. And we sat at that yield sign for 20 minutes. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, I get it. This is what patience is right here. <laughs> This is what patience is and self-control. But that's the attitude we have to get. Nothing is going to get us upset. Because we just started studying the book of Revelation. We're just in the first eight verses. But I know at the end we win. Yeah. So what's the point of getting upset? We win. We win. No matter what, we win. The sun comes up. My dad used to tell me this all the time. The sun comes up and it goes down. You do what you can do from this point to this point. And tomorrow, if you get to wake up, you can start all over again. So what's the point? What's the point? Finally, brethren. You know, we spend all our time thinking about, well, we meditate on God, we read, we study, we pray. Me. I don't know what y'all do. Me. Once I leave the house, my mind is 9-0. I got to do this, 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 this. I have an agenda. Half of my mind is working. Half of my mind is meditating on God. I don't know how you do that because it's a proven fact that multitasking is impossible. <laughs> you think you can do it, but you can't do either one well. You may do, you may do two things, but you won't do both of them well. So maybe it's not impossible, just highly unlikely. <laughs> And all the analytical people are going, he don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but the word says, finally, brethren, he tells us what to think about. He gives us, this is the formula right here. The lust of the flesh, the fruits of the spirit, and then he tells us what to think about. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. How many times have we heard in our life, I sure wish life came with a set of directions. It's right here. From Genesis to Maps. Right here. How many of you wish we had directions on raising kids? Yeah. Spoil the rod. Spare the rod, spoil the child. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in that one. But it's true. That is a true statement. That's part of our problem. 
today is we spoil the children. And that's all. I ain't going any further with that. Just that, <laughs> that can get off into a deep hole real quick. My kids are raised. Now I get to spoil my grandkids and send them home with all the sugar they can eat. <laughs> not if they're not coming to your house, Chief. <laughs> oh, man. You know, there were a lot of things that the Lord has, you know, for two weeks since pastor told me that he would like for me to come up here and talk about this stuff. Things that we can use every day. Just the things I do. Those are the things I do right there. That's what I try to do to live my life. You know, there's a lot of other things that go with it. There's a lot of decisions I make every day. We've talked about the Conquer Series and what that stands for. There's nothing you can do about the first look, but there's all kinds of things you can do about the second look. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. There's things that the enemy tries to throw in front of you to make you stumble, to keep you down, mm -hmm. to keep you hating on yourself. Sure. That it's a choice. You can turn this way, and you turn this way, and you turn this way, and sometimes you just got to close your eyes mm -hmm. to get away from it. This one's going to sting, but it's something that's very passionate to me. And I know we've got some young ladies in the room. We've got some older ladies. We've got some... Ladies, don't show what you're not willing to share. Ever. Never show what you're not willing to share. Because when you do, it affects the men that are around you. It may be harmless. You may not mean anything by it. But women are passionate with their hearts. Men are sight-oriented. And that's what I'm talking about. You turn this way, and it's, <laughs> you turn this way. There's no place to look because it's gotten to a point where nobody wears any clothes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you can ask Kathleen. She's sitting right back there. She'll ask me, well, what do you think about this? And I'll say, well, if you're expecting to go anywhere with me, I wouldn't buy that. And it's not that I'm trying to be. It's just that I'm protecting you guys. Because she works on Wednesdays. She runs a restaurant at the sale barn over here in Seguin. Those guys are a, they're a group, I'm telling you. And if she were to dress provocatively, it would get out of control quickly. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. Just throwing it out there. Amen. Guys, same thing. Mm -hmm. Keep your shirts on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spend two more dollars. Buy a pair of pants that reach the floor. <laughs> and spend a couple of more dollars and buy a belt to hold them up here where they belong. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I don't care what color your boxers are. I don't care. I, I, oh, anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I am sorry. But he asked me to share things about life. And that's two of the things that I want to share. 
The list goes on if you want more, but I think that's probably enough. That's two things to meditate on anyway. It's two very important things. As Christians, as men and women of God, that's two things that we should be conscious of. Another thing is the way we drive. People that tailgate twist me up. And I've just gotten to the point in the last couple of weeks where I don't brake check people. You get pretty close to me, the back end of that silver Dodge pickup's going to come at you real quick. But I've got to where I don't do it anymore. And the reason I don't is because somebody going that way may see me coming in this way and they say, well, I was thinking about going to that church, but I'm not anymore. It's just stuff like that. What would Jesus do? The wristband. What would Jesus do? How would he act? That's what we should be doing. That's what we should be striving to do in every aspect of our life, every second of our waking moment. That's what we should be doing. If we claim to be if they put us on trial, have enough evidence that we can be convicted. Okay. That's it. If I keep going, it's going to seem like a ramp, and I don't want to do that. I want to walk in love. I want to have peace. I want to have joy. I want to have patience. I want to think about these things that he gives us. The pure things, the true things, the noble things. And if they're a good report, whatever we do, make sure that our report is good. When people say something about this church, about our pastors, about the word that comes forth from here, about the love that oozes out of this building. Everything that they can say is true. And it's in love. Look down a couple of more verses and it says, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We can do it. We can do it. So if it's dragging you down, if it's holding you back, if it's kicking you in the head, drop it and walk away from it. It may be easier said than done, but if you keep dropping it, you take a couple of steps and you pick it up, drop it again. And after a while, it's going to be so far back there, you're not going to walk back there and get it anyway. And God's going to put something new and better. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. And it's his good pleasure to give us the keys to the kingdom. So, that's all I got. Thank you.
body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then if you skip over to the next chapter, Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is no condemnation. Paul, a, a, a great theologian, a, a man that was converted on the Damascus Road, that was persecuting uh, Christians as Saul, knocked him off his horse, blinded him, Paul went away to study the scripture because everything that he thought he knew was turned upside down. Paul is talking and he's going to come back as this great preacher and teacher, this great encourager of the first century church. He's saying that all of these things that I know to be true, I still fight this battle between the spirit man and the flesh man. I still have to encourage myself to do the right thing when these things come against me. I still have to encourage myself. I still have to go back to the biblical principles that I know that Jesus had taught me. I still have to do that. I still have to encourage myself daily. I still have to put down my flesh daily. It is a choice. But greater is he who is in us than is he's in the world. So that, that just puts a stamp on it because what he is saying is that we have this, these two things. I titled this, he didn't give a title tonight, but on my notes I titled Lush, Lust of the Flesh versus Fruit of the Spirit. We have a choice. We have a choice. And that fruit of self-control, that's a choice. That's a choice. We can choose to act one way and you see it, you see it coming, you feel it coming, it rises up from within you, and it gets all the way up here, and then you just want to just let it out. But we can control that. We can control that. We, it, the, the word tells us that, that we could take every thought captive. Every thought captive. That means that we can control it. So we have to exercise that. So, again, thank you, Elder Chip, for the word tonight. Amen. Amen. I just want to just close out in prayer. If any of you need prayer, if this word just touch you right where you're at, we're going to have our prayer workers come forward. But I just want to pray over you. Don't leave here if you feel like you, you need prayer, additional prayer. Uh, if you need someone to just agree with you in prayer. Uh, if you've been struggling with, with your thought life or uh, taking thoughts captive or meditating on things that are good and of good report, versus just giving into the flesh. There are so many things that come at you in the world that challenge you from day to day. I was talking to some of our members today and then over the last couple of days. And, and as a pastor, when I hear stuff, I get frustrated for the people because I hear some stuff that is just the enemy is busy. And I have to encourage myself to give the right answer and I have to encourage the people of God to continue on in faith, even though it seems like the enemy is trying to win. He doesn't win. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. The Lord will fight your battle. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this word tonight. I thank you, Lord, for that you uh, have not given us uh, condemnation, that therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That, Father, you've given us a road map of life, the book of wisdom. It teaches us and guides us and encourages us in every aspect of our lives. Father, we give it all over to you tonight. I thank you for the, for the presenter of the word tonight. Father, how you used him. I ask that you fill him to overflowing in the name of Jesus as he poured out tonight, Lord. I I ask, Lord, that you would continue to protect every member within redemptive grace and everyone within the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would go before us and be our rear guard, that, Father, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that, Lord, you are restoring, healing,
delivering and setting the captives free. Father, if we lift up your name, you will draw all men to you, Lord. So we lift up your name. We encourage you. We magnify you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Hug five people and you're dismissed. The altars are still open. Amen.